Paul. Well, I'd like to ask Tarek Ali uh, your response to the report, especially the sections that talk about Blair's uh, almost obsession with regime change, with getting rid of uh, Saddam Hussein. And also, why did it take seven years to produce this report? <clears throat> it took seven— <clears throat> It took seven years because it, uh, it took seven years because every single person interviewed had to have a chance to see the report, and Blair and his lawyers were looking at the fine print very closely, as were the generals and other people. Uh, the findings of the report, quite honestly, are not very remarkable or original. As Sami has already said, these were things that were being said by all of us before this uh, war started. It was what virtually every speaker said at the Million Strong Stop the War demonstration in London. Tony Benn and Jeremy Corbyn, in particular, have been saying all this. So, to have official confirmation that what we were all saying was right is nice, but it's too little and too late. And because the report had no uh, desire or was not permitted to discuss the legality of this exercise, <clears throat> it means that while there is evidence in the report for independent lawyers to proceed and file a citizen suit, uh, the report itself doesn't allow the state to actually prosecute Blair for war crimes. He is a war criminal. He pushed the country into this illegal war. His supporters in Parliament are trying to get rid of Jeremy Corbyn, who was 100 percent right on this war, backed by the bulk of the media. So we're in a strange situation now. Um, the report, I think, will anger lots of people who, unlike us, were not convinced by the movement that what was taking place was a lie, based on a lie, and it was illegal. What is going to happen now remains to be seen, but I would very much hope that uh, independent groups of lawyers and jurists demand now that Blair is charged and tried. It's very clear he pushed the war, he forced uh, the intelligence services to prepare dodgy dossiers. Uh, he pushed his attorney general to changing his opinions before he was allowed to address the cabinet. All that we have in the report. The question is, is anyone going to answer for it, or is this just designed to be therapeutic? And, Tariq, about this whole issue of the uh the Labour leadership in Parliament trying to remove Jeremy Corbyn, even though he was one of the most vocal anti-war uh, advocates, uh, and even though the base, the, the majority base of the Labour Party uh, still supports him? Well, I mean, it's bizarre. I th you know, some people uh, uh, said to me that the reason they tried this coup against Jeremy in Parliament was so he wasn't leader of the Labour Party when the Chilcot report came out. We'll see what he says today at his press conference in three or four hours' time. But I think he will be very harsh. The irony is that the woman who is the main candidate against him is a supporter of the Iraq war. Now that we have a judicial inquiry which says what it says about the war, I think surely it's time that constituency Labour parties started the process of removing some of the chief warmongers from Parliament. They don't represent anyone now except a cabinet in the past, a government which went to war. And if you look at some of the footage being shown on Channel 4, uh, uh, today, what Corbyn said, what Ben said, with what Blair said, I mean, the utter complacency and brutality with which Blair told Parliament, there are some people here who think that regime change is wrong. And Gordon Brown nodding vigorously and Margaret Beckett on the other side. These are all the people involved in trying to get rid of Jeremy Corbyn. And something, you know, I hope Labour members uh, will now fight back, because it's precisely against this sort of thing that uh, uh, Corbyn has been 
fighting the right inside the Labour Party. Um, Sami Ramadani, you were on the steering committee of Stop the War Coalition, a friend of Labour opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn. This backlash against him for around the Brexit vote, which he uh, was opposed to uh, when he was the opposition leader and spoke out against on Democracy Now!, spoke out against Britain leaving the European Union just two weeks ago. Um, what you think is behind it? Really, uh, my own feeling is, uh, and uh, probably Tarek would share that view with me, is that they are genuinely worried that Jeremy Corbyn might lead uh, the next uh, to victory, the Labour movement to victory in the next general election. And they are terrified of that prospect. They looked at the four by-elections. Uh, that happened since he was elected, and they were all won with comfortable majorities. In fact, the last one uh, doubled Labour's majority. And then they looked at the local election results, and again, uh, he did very well. And they are genuinely worried that if he wins, what's going to happen to them? Uh, what's They're going concerned to happen he'll to be their prime political minister. Record of supporting the Iraq War, of voting with the Tories, or abstaining on uh, on important uh, uh, welfare uh, welfare policy. The Tories uh, applying uh, neocon policies. They they seem to prevaricate or or concede to Tory demands and so on and so forth. And their abandonment of working class communities over uh, 2025. They continued on a Thatcherite policy. Tha Margaret Thatcher's premiership destroyed uh, uh, so many working class communities, and the new Labour leadership under Tony Blair simply continued that policy of abandoning working class communities, and some of whom became so disillusioned, even uh, voted for uh, with uh, with UKIP, which is an extreme right-wing party. Uh, Sami Ramadani, we have to break. And Jeremy Corbyn is providing a new vision and a new uh, strategy, and they want to undermine him. Sami Ramadani, we have to break, and Tarek Ali, but we're going to come back to ask you about what happened in Iraq this weekend, the largest car bomb attack since the Gulf War began. We'll be back in a minute.